Hi guys, Dave here for Southern Land Solo. Thanks for tuning in. This video is on buying vintage wool clothing in New Zealand. Mostly what I'm hinging on in this video is uppers, shirts, vests and coats. And uh, particularly focused on made for the bush, but there's a little bit there about uh, buying for the urban environment as well. There's three areas I want to touch on in particular. The first is knowing what you're buying. The second is where do you buy them from? And the third is a recommendation. If I could only buy one garment, which one would it be? So first let's look at knowing what you're buying. Most of the vintage garments that you see online seem to be Swan Dry's. There are some other brands which are similar to Swan Dry. Uh, Wrightson, Remarkable, Everest, Mountaineer, I believe there's one called Florida as well. Florida for wool garments, I know, but I believe that's a Kiwi brand as well. They, they seem very similar to the Swan Dry styles, and they also seem just as robust and just as hard wearing as Swan Dry. They're also vintage items. I used to have an Everest shirt. It was very, very similar to the Swan Dry Ranger shirt right here. And a very tough, very coarse wool. Had to definitely wear something underneath it but easily is um, easily handle the bush and the hard the hard yards that the Swan Dry Ranger would as well. So buying some of those older vintage brands um, seem to be just as good a deal as buying a Swan Dry. They seem to be around about the same pricing as well. Now vintage I believe means at least 20 years old and the style of those old vintage Swan Dries and, and similar woolen garments hasn't really changed dramatically. Uh, again this Ranger shirt it's the same style that they were using back in the 1970s and all those um, competitor brands that I just mentioned along with Swan Dry had similar styling. Swan Dry still does the same style shirt today. This is a relatively new Ranger, it's not an old one. So I guess it's simplicity but if it, you know, if it works, keep doing it. You know, no need to change. And these things sell like hotcakes, all these Swan Dry garments. But one thing I have noticed on Trade Me in particular is everything seems to be called a bush shirt. Now, this video is particularly focused on items for the bush or outdoors on the farm, but everything on Trade Me seems to be called a bush shirt. The original, a, a real genuine Swan Dry bush shirt that goes by that name, when you go on Swan Dry's website, you'll see bush shirt written against it, is this guy. This is called the Mosgiel bush shirt. The other one, which I'll show in a video clip here, is called the original bush shirt. Both the Mosgiel bush shirt and the original bush shirt are made of tough uh, outer layer wool. This is a very tough, very resilient um, garment. It's an outer layer. It's called a bush shirt because it's a traditional name. It's not actually a shirt, it's a coat. So when you see uh, on Trade Me the word bush shirt, it could mean one of these or could mean one of the other items that we'll, we'll, we'll touch on. So it's important to, to spot the item and know what you're buying. Now, the original bush shirt, as you can see in that video, uh, has no zipper. It just has a, a shoelace or a boot lace going down a quarter from the neck down a quarter of the way down the chest. Uh, some of them just have a collar, but um, most of them have a hood attached. And it has one pocket on the left hand uh, chest. That's your bush shirt, your original bush shirt. Here is the Mosgiel bush shirt. Same robust outer fabric as the original bush shirt but it has a full length zipper. The zipper also comes up from the bottom. It's lined inside. The original bush shirt as well as lined, which I didn't say, but this is lined inside. Got one chest pocket. These are usually giveaways for the, for the outer garment bush shirts. There's that single chest pocket on the left. And the Mosgiel also has two uh, hand warmer pockets as well. And this one has a collar and a removable hood. This is more the upmarket version of the original bush shirt. So, original bush shirt, Mosgiel bush shirt, tough outer layers. They're your genuine bush shirts. The first giveaway for those guys is got a single pocket on the left, a, a large one. Other items that you'll see called a bush shirt is the Ranger shirt. Often that's called a bush shirt. This is the Ranger shirt, it's a mid layer shirt. It's a mid-weight mid or lighter weight wool as compared to these outer garments. So it's actually called the Ranger shirt. 
how to spot these when you're buying them, two chest pockets and a zip goes quarter of the way down. Some of the competitor products are very, very similar styling. Two chest pockets and a, a quarter zip and some of them might have buttons, I think. It has a collar, no hood. And this basic Ranger shirt, no other pockets. So the Ranger shirt, that's your mid-weight, mid-layer, uh, outdoors shirt, the Ranger shirt. The other Ranger shirt you can get is a variation of this style. is called the Extreme. The pockets have a couple of pleats in them, I believe. I think it has hand warmer pockets, even though it's still this mid-weight wool. It's got the extra features. And the lining in it, in the Extreme, the Ranger Extreme, uh, is water resistant and it's windproof. So that is your Ranger Extreme shirt. This is just your basic Ranger shirt. Another one you'll find called a bush shirt is this guy. This is the Swan Dry Rover. I've got a video on my playlist, one of my playlists. I think it's called New Zealand Scenery and Culture. And it's a black and white video I got from New Zealand Archives and I posted it on there. I don't think it has any sound. The sound's gone. But it's from the 1950s. And it's just this black and white video of these hikers or trappers and campers going out uh, in, into the woods or into the wilds and camping. And after, you know, they stop to make the camp for the night, defoliate half the forest as they used to do back then just to build a campfire. But a couple of the guys pull out with these. These, rain, uh, these rover, Swan Dry rover uh, jackets or coats. Now these were, my understanding, were made for urban wear and possibly on the farm. For the bush, they're not too bad, just a little bit tight. So you want to buy one or two sizes larger. If you normally take a large, buy an extra large or even a two extra large. If you're going to use it for a bit of heavy bush work or heavy farm work, I recommend buying a size or two larger. How do you spot this? Well, again, bush shirt. Everything's called a bush shirt on Trade Me. I don't think anybody's trying to do the dirty on anybody. I think people just aren't fully aware and so uh, of the actual terminology. But this is, again, it's a, it's a tough, hard-wearing outer coat. A little bit tight, so by, again, by a couple of sizes too large. The way you distinguish this is the Rover has one upper, upper pocket has a flap. These pockets, these flaps are loose. They don't have any buttons or snaps on them. And then it has two lower pockets. I'll put this on and give you a better idea. So that's it there. A full length zipper. This zipper is actually aftermarket. I put it on because it's much bigger and a little bit, well, quite a bit more robust than the Swan Dry one. Although the Swan Dry ones do hold up very well, I just wanted something better for the bush. So you have that top left-hand pocket, and I've put snaps on this afterwards. I've got a sewer to do that for me. Normally this flap just hangs loose. And then two lower pockets, again, with loose flaps on them. They just hang loose, and your hands go down into them like that. They can be hand warmers. So this is your Rover coat. And the Rover as well is fully lined. I think it's a wool polyester mix, I believe, but it's fully lined down the sleeves as well. Very, very warm. Good hard wearing outer layer wool. Very tough. Um, they don't have a hood, they just have a collar. And a dead giveaway for these guys is the adjustments at the back. These are elastic and there's two button adjustments on them. Top, make them tight or loose or just have them completely undone altogether. So that's a dead giveaway. When you see those in the photographs, that's your Rover coat. These guys go for some pretty good deals. I think I got this in summertime and I think I got it delivered off trade me for 50 bucks. You know, 50 bucks. Awesome garment. This has got decades of life left in it if you look after it. And I don't know how old it is. This is a words faded. Yeah, made in New Zealand, I believe. It's not made in China, but um, very good deal for 50 bucks delivered. So getting into winter now, and.
course the prices are going up I noticed that things now about 20 or 30 dollars more but uh, still very good deals honorable mention these fellas you see these every now and then these are ex New Zealand Army um, wool coats. I don't believe Swan Dry made them. I believe they're made by Everest or maybe some other, a number of other manufacturers. Maybe Swan Dry made them. I don't think so though. This one is a large. I normally take a large. This fits a little bit too snug for my liking for the bush, but still a very comfortable jacket. Loose fitting enough. Dead giveaway, camouflage pattern. You'll see some Swan Dries do have a camouflage pattern as well, but I think they were Oh, actually, yeah, they would have been made for New Zealand Army, so I believe Swan Dry didn't make them at one stage. But their giveaway about this, camouflage pattern, full length zipper, no lining, got a waist cord, and two chest pockets. The top flap of the chest pockets is a whole extra, um, extra outer layer of wool. So you get your normal layer under there, then they put this over the top, and it doubles up as a flap for your chest pocket. That also comes down the back as well. You have that double layer there. And epaulets, military, so it's got epaulets on it. This was originally the length of that swan dry, but I don't definitely don't need two swan dries. The reason why I got this was to cut it short and just have a lighter weight outer coat. I've only my bush stuff, I got this one heavyweight coat. I got this one outer coat. That's all I have as my outers for the bush. I've made this lighter and shorter. It's easier to get into, um, easier to put on, easier when I'm getting in and out of cars. I don't have all this extra fabric that I've got to sort of tuck around me whenever I want to sit down somewhere. I got it cut short. Got to put a couple of uh, cuts up either side and then sew them just so when I'm sitting down it just folds over me much easier. And with the cutoffs, I got him to make some hand warmer pockets. This is Masoa who does the stuff for me. He made some really good hand warmer pockets out of the cutoffs of this fabric. Um, normally it doesn't have them, so really, really capitalize on the versatility of this garment. And this thing here should last me for a few decades as well. All this stuff should, if you look after it. When we're talking about buying online or buying vintage wool, one thing is 100% merino jerseys. I really think these are worth it. They're 10 to 20 bucks at op shops. Um, you find them quite cheap online as well on Trade Me. Um, not vintage, of course. Well, maybe some are, but I don't think, think they really are. Most of them aren't. But definitely worth buying because it's a good base layer for underneath this itchy stuff that you can get. And you can layer up in wool really well with these. So for 10, 20 bucks, well worth a mention. Another honorable mention is wool coats made for the urbanite, made for the city. Some of these are pretty robust. I think this is an old Hallenstein's one. Again, it's maybe we're out of the vintage classification here, but if reason why you're buying vintage is because it's cheap, then these are well worth a look into. What it is, I think this had a polyester lining. I completely cut the lining out. If it's got polyester or cotton lining, I just cut it out completely, even out of the sleeves, because they inhibit the wool from functioning properly, and it's the function of the wool that I'm after. So, also buy them one or two sizes too big, because if they're made for the city, they're going to be tighter fitting, more form fitting to look better. So buy a couple sizes too big, so you can layer up underneath them, and you can also move around as you would in the bush or out on the farm or outdoors, whatever you're doing. You know, you've got a full range of movement, and that you're not stressing and pulling tight on these seams because these aren't going to pull it up as much as an outdoors garment. They're not made as robust, they're not made for that. So you can compensate for that by buying a size or two or, or two larger than what you normally would take. And, and again, so buy the larger sizes, cut the linings out, leave the pocket linings in there because usually they're synthetic lining, otherwise your pockets ain't going to be any good. But cut the linings out and you can get yourself a pretty good cheap outdoors garment. A good item to buy that you see tons of them on, on Trade Me, are these fellas, vests. 
Again, Wrightson makes vests and um, a number of other manufacturers out there make them as well. And this is a Swan Dry vest. Don't know how old it is. I think it could be 10 years old, 20 years old, I don't know. But these are really good value. Cut larger in the sleeve area so that you have more arm movement. Good lightweight extra layer of warmth. And the wool on this thing is more of a, a thicker, tighter weave than on this mid-layer Ranger shirt. So these two together as mid-layers, I would wear this. Uh, I would have my Merino on as my base layer. Then I would have this. Then I would have this, uh, the Ranger shirt over the top of this. Then my outer coat if I needed it. But it just a good extra layer adds good wind resistance if you're wearing the two together because these things, these Ranger shirts do tend to let the wind through and a lot of extra warmth as well. These things start at like 20 bucks. We're heading into winter now and the prices are of, of all these wool garments go up by like 20 to 30 dollars so far. But if you have the, if you're um, not in a hurry to get one now, wait until the summer season when the prices drop by, you know, quite significantly. And you pick these up for really good deals. So, Swan Dry Woolen Vest. Again, for the outdoors, reason why I got this is because it's got no sew seams here. It's just one solid piece of fabric, unbroken and unsewn. Those sew seams, when you're wearing a backpack, the backpack pushes those seams into your skin and it can rub you a little raw after a while, can become a bit irritating. So a nice flat back is what I like in these, which is why I got this one. I think the Ranger shirt is the same. Yeah, the only seam the Ranger shirt has is for that very slight lining that it has, and you won't feel that. So where do you purchase them? Okay, trade me as you've heard me mention throughout this video. Uh, probably the easiest way to shop. You sit there at your computer, you got a page of like 40, 50 garments in front of you, up to seven pages of that. And all the prices are there and you can pick and choose and shop around. You can ask questions of the sellers and I definitely recommend that. Make sure you're getting the right garment because remember the sellers only putting down what they know as well. And they may call it a bush shirt and you may, you may think you're getting that but you're getting this. They may call it a bush shirt and you think you're getting this and what you're doing is you're getting a cotton shirt that looks like that. Um, they may put up a vest that looks like wool and then but when you ask them the question you find out it's fleece. And if in doubt and if they're not sure themselves ask them to photograph the labels and put the labels online so that you can see them. All the sellers I've seen are pretty good. They, um, if, you know, if they don't know the garments themselves, they're willing to get the information and put it online so you can make a choice. So trade me is really good. Ask the questions and how I tend to buy, if I see an item that I want and I think, yep, that suits the purpose and the buyer has a buy now, I don't try bidding for it because it's too easy to lose it. I just, if they, they have a buy now price, I just buy it. Get it done, get it over with and get it shipped to me so I can start using it. And that way I'm guaranteed I'm getting that garment. I could still be outbid by someone else, or if I wait to start, wait till the bidding starts, someone else could come in and buy now, and I've lost the opportunity. That's how I bought this. This was going for about a hundred bucks or something like that. Finally found it in a large, uh, which they're hard to find. Um, usually they're medium, and it's super tight on me. This was a large. I asked the buyer about the large sizing because I wasn't sure. That photo of that looked like someone had written it, written in the letter L. And so I asked them and they told, they described her, um, the size they were and they wore it quite comfortably and I thought, yep, that's cool for me. They had a buy now, I just bought it. it. It's what I wanted, turns out to be bang on the money and I didn't waste any time. Other places to buy, op shops definitely, you know, St. John's, Red Cross, SBCA, the hospices, the various churches around, definitely shop around the op shops and take your time and shop around. That's where you'll find really good deals like these, the Merino stuff. You find a bit of swan dry stuff in there, not, not very much, but you find a lot of wool urban clothing that you can look at and see, oh, that's robust enough for the bush. A couple of sizes too big, which is good. And cut the lining out and you get yourself a good bush jacket. The third place would be Save Mart. Save Mart. If you have one in your area, they're well worth visiting. Save Mart's up here in Auckland. They're um, big empty factories, big empty building and just rows and rows of clothing on racks. And you just walk up there looking for what you're after and 
you know, walk down the other side. It's, um, you cover a lot of ground, you look through a lot of gar garments in only one shop. And it's, they're pretty good, and their prices are sort of midway between op shop and trade me. And so save marts, definitely worth buying. Um, quite often, if, if you're looking for something and you're flexible and what will suit your needs, you can probably get everything you need just in one shop, just from Save Mart. Meaning your uh, your base layer, your mid layer, and an outer layer as well, if you're pretty flexible so, in your outer layer. The third thing I wanted to hit was, if you could buy one item, what would be my recommendation? Okay, so I've only got so much coin, I want to get one garment, because that's all I can afford, but I want it to be the best I can get for my money. The one I would get would be the Rover. Now, for me, again, we're talking about it for um, the outdoors environment for the bush, be this Rover coat. It's got pockets down there. If you don't like the loose flaps, you can get a button sewn on or a couple little snaps sewn on the corner. It's got a full length zip. The zippers are quite small, but they seem to be very robust and seem to hold out very well. It's fully lined, so there's two layers of wool there. I believe this is wool mix, 50 50. 50 wool, 50 synthetic, but it's still a very good mix. So you get a lot of coat for your money. And as we've seen by that 1950s uh, archives video on my playlist, uh, these things go way back and they, uh, they have been used for years out there in the rugged outdoors. At the very least, farmers have really put these to the test. And when the farmers sell them on Trade Me, you know, you might find some holes and some wear and tear in them, maybe need some buttons replaced, but there's still a coat there that's got like 10, 20 years worth of life in it. So. My recommendation, if you could only buy one for the outdoors, what would it be? It would be the Rover. That's one I would buy. And again, buy a size or two sizes too large. That way you can layer up underneath and you have that freedom of movement within. As for looking after them, um, vintage wool garments. You're going to get moth holes in them, wear holes in them, some tears, uh, loose threads, stuff like that. That should bring the price down. Uh, it's a bit funny on Trade Me. Some people sell it for top dollar, even though it's got all the, those uh, undesirable features on them. And some people lower the price because of it, but it should bring the price down, I would think. But you know, if it's what you want and you've, you've seen, the, seen the holes or the damage to it and you can fix it, then I would still buy it and I would just sew it up and fix it. Even the, some of those garments that have those holes in them, the holes haven't been repaired. Some of those holes look like they've been there for like a, decades and they haven't really expanded that much so you know wool holds together quite well definitely sew it up if you can but you know you can still be flexible and it. it's wool it's hard wearing if it's made for the outdoors it's and it's got swan dry name on it, it's going to be a good hard wearing garment so you know you can buy it no props and um, again just repair it yourself or just leave it as is if you're happy with that one thing to definitely do make your wool garment last is get this. This one here is wool mix. Buy this or a similar um, product right off the supermarket shelf, about five or six bucks for one of these. And you'll get a ton of wool washers out of that. You think one cap will wash a whole garment. And um, smaller garments like this merino jersey, I use like half a cap or even less. So you get a lot of washers out of that. Buy one of these. <laughs> Trouble with wool, it, it can look really good. The colors can still be really vibrant. Wool um, is antimicrobial, so it doesn't have those odors. So you, you smell it and it, it smells like wool, how, how it should smell. But when you put it in the wash, yeah, you'll find decades of accumulated dirt in there. If you're buying vintage clothing, you're probably getting vintage dirt with it as well. The wool just hides it very well. Buy one of these and wash those garments and wash those blankets as well if you're into that um, when they come in. I bought this this guy here. I don't know when they stopped using. I think they were using these in the in the 80s, maybe the 90s. And I've washed this thing three times, and it still needs more washing. So three times, I just don't want to damage the fabric. I don't know what if I keep washing it, if it's going to um, do anything to the fabric. So I pulled a lot of dirt out of this. Remember, this is ex-army. I'm ex-army, and if they're still the same then as they were when I was in, then we didn't like spending our weekends and our downtime washing stuff. You throw it in the washer, and if it didn't go in the washer, you just give it a shake, hang it up, and it's fine. That's how we looked at it. So 
this had accumulated dirt from years of hard use in it and three washes and I haven't gotten all the dirt out though it's much much better than it was yep, so look after your garments when you get them give them a wash five or six dollar investment and your wool will go a lot further so that's my video on buying vintage wool clothing in New Zealand and we particularly focused on swan dries and buying swan dries or buying wool clothing for the bush uh, one thing I'd like to add is these are just my experiences and I just my videos are I just share what I've learned so I share my successes my failures the things I've learned and there could definitely be some errors in them if you see any errors please you know update us in the comments section uh, it's like if buying vintage wool clothing definitely do your research and definitely check it out if I made any uh, wrong descriptions here I don't want anybody to go buy it and go oh you know Dave said that <laughs> which I probably did and then um, and then you feel bad and I feel bad because you bought the wrong garment check things out for yourselves and make sure you're making the right decision particularly with my wild edible videos I've done a, I do a lot of research on those before I put anything into my mouth and it pays to do the same for yourselves as well I just look at my my videos as something to add to the library of information that is out there that can be useful and again just adds to the info that people already have thanks guys so if you like this video, please like, uh, please subscribe and share, and I'll see you on the next video.